What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining this video. Thank you for tuning in to Worship Leading 101, where we deal with the basics of leading worship. All right, today we're going to be talking about worship leaders spending time with God. Let's pray a little bit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to be able to come together and to talk and be able to dialogue. Father, we pray right now, God, that you would move and that you would bless someone who needs to hear this video. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Let's jump right into it. I'm talking about worship leaders. You must spend time with God. This thing has been dealing with me. And I know you're saying this, Mike, this is so basic. Yes, it is basic, but I done seen some people and I can tell you ain't spend no time with Jesus Christ before you got up to lead. And I want to say that you cannot be a worship leader. You cannot be an effective worship leader because you can be, they can put you in position, but you can't be effective if you're not spending time with God. There's just point blank period. You can't be effective. You can't lead people to a place that you have not been yourself. That just makes no sense. You have to spend time with God, guys. I mean, you 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 have to do it. I mean, how can you tell me that the presence of the Lord is here? I feel the presence of God and you ain't spend no time. You're not even familiar with his presence enough to say, OK, I. I in my quiet time, I feel this presence, so I, I know this might be God. But if you're not even spending no time, how can you tell us the presence of God is here? No, your flesh is here. No, that bump just sound good. That, see what I'm saying? You've got to spend time with God. The name of the position tells you the qualifications of the position. Worship leader. You got to be spending time in worship. You have to have your own private time away from the platform, away from the congregation to spend with God. You have to indulge in that, guys. I mean, this thing is so, so imperative. It's so imperative. We as leaders, we need to spend a significant amount of time with God. We need to have more than just 15, 10 minutes. No, we need to spend at least an hour with God. At least. That should be your least. Now, that's what I do. I, I spend at least an hour, God. I try to do it every day. Um, my apostle has been um, challenging everyone in our church to at least pray for an hour. So I, I've been doing that. I've tried to make sure I spend an hour with God because I want to hear him. I want to know him. I want to see his plans that he has for this service. I don't want to just jump out there and do some things. You see what I'm saying? You got to spend time with God. And this is not a rebuke. I'm not trying to rebuke nobody. I'm just, I'm just really passionate about spending time with God and worship leading. All right. Um, there was this quote that I heard this great man of God say, um, Dr. Matthew Stevenson. I went to his conference a couple weeks ago and he said, you cannot lead past your experiences with God. And that thing told me up. You cannot lead past your experience, if you haven't had enough experience in his presence, if you haven't experienced in his presence enough or been in his face enough, how can you take me to his face? Hmm. How can you take me to the throne room and you ain't never been to the throne room either? Hmm. You're supposed to be leading me. That means you're supposed to know a little bit more than what I know. You're supposed to know more than me. But if I'm spending 10 minutes and I'm a lay member and you're the worship leader and you're only spending 10 minutes with God, where are you taking me? I've been here. I need somebody who's going to take me higher. I mean, this stuff is so imperative, guys. And like I said, this is not a rebuke. This is just something that has been on my heart, guys. You have to spend time with God. You got to. You got to. And I also want to give you uh, a couple of reasons why you should be spending time with God. I know it's obvious you need to be doing that anyway because you're a Christian, but I'm still going to go over it. One of the reasons why you need to spend time with God is to hear God. Is to hear. God is always speaking and he always wants to talk to his children. He always wants to tell us what's next, what's coming, warn us. Uh, he always wants to give us some clarity on some things. When you spend that quality time with God, he gives you clarity or he warns you or he tells you what he wants to do in that service. 
He tells you, hey, do this, sing this song, take this song away, blah, blah, blah. And he tells you, he forewarns you and let you know what's, what's coming up in this service or what he wants to do in this service. Hey, this service I want to heal. So sing songs about healing. This service I want to mend the broken heart. So sing songs about mending the broken heart. But if we're not spending enough time with the God and we're picking up our own favorite songs to sing and just picking songs out of a bucket list and not spending enough time with God, we will miss his whole movement because we didn't hear him. Now, I'm going to give you an example of something I experienced a couple weeks ago. I was praying and spending time with God uh, right before uh, service started. This was like maybe four or five o'clock in the morning. And I heard God say, all right, I want to I want my people to cry out to me today. I want to invite them. I want you to invite them to come up to the altar and lay down before me and cry out to me. So that Sunday, I said, OK. I heard God say that. I told my pastor. My pastor said, hey, if God, that's what God told you, go ahead. During service, right before we started, I got the mic. We prayed. I said, I want to invite you. I heard this morning, I heard the Holy Spirit say for everyone who wants to, to come to the altar, lay on the altar and cry out to him. As soon as I said that, immediately 15 and 20 people rushed to the altar. They were right down there laying on the altar, crying, worshiping. They needed that. But if I didn't spend my own personal time with God, I would have never heard that. I would have missed out or these people would have missed out on their blessings or on their breakthroughs because I didn't hear God say. Now, I'm going to give you a biblical um, example of this, too. So Moses. Moses goes up. He goes up on the mountain and he spent 40 days and 40 nights with God, right? God gives him the Ten Commandments. He comes back down. He gives the commandments to the people. What if Moses decided, I don't want to spend 40 days and 40 nights with God? I don't want to do that. Or what if Moses decided, I'm only going to spend uh, 15 days instead of 40? I'm, I'm just, I, I don't want to do it the whole time. Those commandments probably would have been missed and we wouldn't have them today that's what i'm saying so it's imperative for us leaders worship leaders to spend time with god because of that another reason why you should spend time with god as a worship leader is it helps you to keep your eyes and your focus on jesus christ when you spend that time away from the platform with Jesus Christ, it helps you to keep in perspective that it's not about me, it's about God. When we don't spend enough time with God away from the platform, we begin to think that it's us doing it. And how can I tell you that? When you don't spend enough time with God, what happens is your flesh begins to lead you. Your flesh begins to lead you because you know, you're not adequately spending enough time where he can help you. He can lead you. He can guide you. So your flesh begins to lead you. Your flesh. You're doing everything out of your flesh, singing out of your flesh, praying out of your flesh, uh, dancing out of your flesh. You start be doing everything out of your flesh and the perspective and, and your eyes are no longer focused on Jesus, but they're focused on whatever your flesh or whatever the crowd or whatever uh, bump may move. You're, you're focused on the flesh and you're no longer focused on Jesus. You have to walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But you can't walk in the spirit if you're not even spending time with the Holy Ghost. You're not even listening to the Holy Ghost. You're not even worshiping, praying, or, or talking to God. How are you going to walk in the spirit? You're going to fulfill this lust of the flesh. You're going to fulfill it. And you're going to begin to lead that way. And I don't want that to happen to anyone. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to you, to any other worship leader. So I just wanted to come on here and say, please spend time with God. It is imperative. It is so imperative. It is so dire to our to our position. Like I said earlier, our position tells us the qualifications. Worship leader, a person who leads worship, a person who indulges themselves in worship so much that they can help other people to come into worship. It's so imperative, guys. Is so imperative. So if this video blessed you, I pray that you will share, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't already, go ahead and like me on Facebook at Michael E. Gould. And go ahead and like me and subscribe on YouTube at Michael E. Gould. I pray that you continue to have a great day and you be blessed.